Hi everybody, um, so I wanted to talk about farming in Africa and uh, actually uh, as I study farming around the world, uh, farming in Africa is actually one of the most interesting areas to study farming. Um, basically for a number of reasons, uh, there's just such a variety of climate, um, there's the jungle here, the Congo jungle, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, North Africa, um, it's just hugely different, um, and actually not as, uh, simple as you might think, so it's actually very complicated, um, each region, uh, kind of has its own, uh, way of farming, um, certainly, uh, all of India is pretty much farmed, uh, a big part of China, uh, is farmed, uh, a lot of Europe, almost all of Europe, in fact, um, and then the United States has a lot of farming here, so, uh, in terms of regions, basically, uh, Africa and South America, uh, but particularly Africa is perhaps the most important new area to study farming in, so, uh, when you're thinking of farming in outer space, uh, or even farming, uh, near the jungle um, or uh, in uh, near the equator um, Africa is pretty much the place to study uh, farming so as I mentioned there's definitely a portion of North Africa that's uh, farming there um, West Africa is probably the biggest chunk of farming uh, there's definitely some uh, interesting area here between Ethiopia uh, Sudan uh, Uganda uh, Tanzania uh, Rwanda and some other areas uh, and uh, even down into South Africa so we're gonna primarily focus on sub-saharan Africa um, some of the farming in this area we will perhaps look at um, but the farming in Egypt is super important as well you can see it's perhaps the uh, biggest chunk if I zoom in here you can see uh, that's the most heavily densely farmed area maybe outside of Morocco uh, in Africa so definitely um, as a separate topic this would be more I would say Middle Eastern farming so the Middle East kind of is uh, North Africa uh, and uh, Turkey and that would maybe be covered under a separate section but it's definitely part of Africa um, and this Nile River is pretty much farmed all the way up until about halfway here maybe uh, two third one third of the way up the Nile River but there's definitely a portion in here um, as you get into Sudan, uh, that's farmed uh, as well. So uh, it's just really important to explain the complexity of the farming here. Um, there's hills, uh, there's desert, uh, there's uh, lots of rivers and just really complex areas as well as a ton of wildlife. So uh, I would say, I would just stress the importance of thinking carefully about farming uh, with close to the wildlife. Um, you can see here Cameroon is not really farmed, um, mainly Nigeria. Uh, there was a lot of wildlife in West Africa. All of that has pretty much been pushed out. Um, even in the Congo jungle, um, there's a part where the monkeys are only in the thousands uh, in some regions. So um, the farming situation is critical uh, to be careful. You can see there's a little pocket here in the Congo that's starting to be uh, jungle farming so and even here uh, along Rwanda and the Serengeti National Park uh, this region here you can see quite heavy farming are uh, right next to that um, so it's really important um, to look at East Africa uh, as a kind of a point where you get into farming almost in the jungle um, as well as Nigeria here you can see Nigeria and then Cameroon and so on so uh, if I show you the uh, jungle map, uh, let's just look at the climate classification map really quickly here. So you can see that the jungle is actually, there's a little sliver here, but this is the heavy jungle, is in the dark blue, a lighter is more, but actually it's even vaster than that. So uh, when you're looking at the, the jungle, I would say definitely even double the size here or triple the size. Um, so you're basically talking about this whole area needs to be rethought about in terms of farming. And that actually means that uh, some of the farming is very interesting over here in Rwanda and along this side because you have some of the same climate as the jungle um, and right on the border of the jungle. But there's some mountains and some other areas that kind of make it very different uh, than the Brazilian jungle. The Brazilian jungle is much flatter. Um, and uh, different. Uh, the population is actually much uh, heavier 
in Africa near the jungle than it is uh, in Brazil. So um, it's a totally different discussion, um, but uh, farming definitely uh, is starting to encroach in the Amazon as well on uh, this light blue region. So, uh, but we're gonna look at that uh, carefully as possible. So uh, here again, you can see the map. Uh, I zoomed in here to see, not being kind of see what's going on in West Africa. Um, it's kind of interesting that a lot of the farming isn't really done in this region. Um, it's actually pretty hard to find a farm uh, if you zoom in on the satellite map, which we're going to try to do, uh, and even do street view, which is really fun. Uh, but you can see South Africa actually is heavily has some pretty heavy farming in there around Johannesburg. Uh, and some others that's pretty surprising and you see South Africa tip there uh, as well So uh, some of the areas that are kind of unexplored for farming uh, that you might want to look into is Mozambique uh, And then along the coast here as well. So as you get further up the river um, System, so if you look at the river system here uh, I'm gonna zoom in and leave it a little bit closer because it gets a little bit better image So you can start to see uh, the wildlife really depends on the fresh water at the start of the kind of like just in a little bit ways because there's not even much water right there it has to be enough drainage so kind of halfway point basically is where both humans and wildlife seem to need the water as well as food so uh, and then near the base of the river it kind of gets polluted and empties into the ocean typically um, you can see the Congo uh, kind of the vast swirl here as you head around uh, the river here and then into there so and then also really interesting is to look at Nigeria and how you can see it goes all the way through here and then basically ends in the Delta here and then you have uh, Lagos which doesn't even show up on the map here for some reason uh, but uh, basically in this region here so you can kind of see all the rivers kind of heading out here uh, into West Africa so you want to kind of grab the map here and see so I'm going to just zoom in so you can see what's going on in West Africa uh, the details here so you can basically see Nigeria has the bulk of the farming and actually Senegal has a lot of farming too um, and then there's kind of some other areas here now farming the funny thing about farming in Africa they farm all kinds of things that you wouldn't expect uh, chocolate for instance gold uh, peanuts, uh, nuts, and some uh, different kinds of farming. Uh, and actually, my hope is that uh, this discussion will help people rethink about the diversity of farming. So definitely there's a chunk here in West Africa. Um, the reason I'm kind of separating this here is because of the climate maps. You can kind of see this whole climate region here. It does kind of change here. It looks like it's continuous, but on the other maps, you can tell it's definitely not. Let me pause here. Uh, so here's a super valuable map so you can start to see what's going on right um, in some countries so obviously what's interesting here is you can kind of see the way the farmland looks in Egypt so you can start to see from the satellite map it actually looks like farmland um, but this uh, in Africa is a totally different story so uh, it's really actually hard to find farmland if you zoom in here um, definitely the jungle uh, out of bounds in terms of farmland you can kind of see the rivers here the Nile River uh, heading up there so uh, and then these Great Lakes so basically there's a, a lot of national parks well not even that a lot I would say very few national parks in Africa um, surprisingly so basically this whole chunk here um, you know is probably gonna turn into farmland in West Africa um, and leaving hopefully the jungle set aside so uh, West Africa and then even down in here where we were talking about uh, Mozambique and Tanzania So this actually area may become extremely valuable Already uh, up in here in Uganda. Uh, they're starting to work on some farmland uh, and then here in Ethiopia um, This is pretty heavily farmed. So uh, And then there's a chunk down here in Africa that we noticed and then on the tip here as well so South Africa so uh, but it's really important to understand uh, the water system as well so you start to see here in East Africa basically what's going on um, so the map does not match up exactly um, when you look at the soil map you can kind of see there's some soil in here that's very good for farming and right in here and then even this purple area is definitely almost not farmable so the pink area is uh, farmable in here 
with the soil, but then it needs irrigation. The blue areas are definitely farmable, um, but uh, it's right on the desert uh, range, so it's very difficult as well. But so basically a lot of this is floodplain, um, but the soil uh, may be okay. So uh, it's kind of interesting to look at that um, as potential farmland. Uh, so the jungle, again, is super difficult here to look at. Um, you can see that some of the same uh, land in here is the same kind of soil as in the jungle. So definitely a very good soil. Um, what you can do is you can compare this to other parts of the world. Um, you can see that the soil is significantly better than the United States. The United States has uh, pretty good soil in this pink region. Um, and the orange region, as you get down towards Florida, is a better soil as well. So... Uh, and then right along the Mississippi, you can see some blue regions being uh, kind of the best. So if we were to zoom in there, you can see. So basically, uh, these regions here um, are potential areas for new farmland. Um, the farmland is really not structured in Africa at all. So uh, there is some, uh, what you'd call like farm after farm kind of stuff uh, in Nigeria. Um, it gets a little bit complicated indeed in uh, Ethiopia because there's hills here, so it's maybe like it is farming out west in the United States. Kind of drier as well, but pretty hot because this runs right through the equator right here. So this is even warmer than Florida. So uh, if you look at on the climate map here, and for some reason it takes a little while to load, but you can see that this is all even closer to the equator and more, more significantly warmer than Florida. Um, and actually right in here is desert um, where Florida gets some of the rain here. Um, some big questions on uh, the vastness of this desert uh, relative even to the United States. You can see in the southwest, we have some of that desert that we can kind of experience and even in Mexico, um, but it's nothing like what they have in Africa and the Middle East. So that desert is a huge chunk of Africa. Uh, basically, that's why they call it Sub-Saharan Africa. And even this sliver here means absolutely no farming. And even along this blue area, I would say, is really questionable. I've looked at the land in there, and it's pretty dry. Big, huge sandstorms do come in. Sandstorms can go into the ocean a thousand, several thousand miles. So it's just amazing what these sandstorms can do um, in Africa. So, uh, and you can see a very dry portion here in South Africa as well. Um, and so basically, it kind of makes for a pretty complicated area um although it doesn't seem that complicated um in the united states um the farming is a little bit more understandable um in terms of but basically what, what i'm trying to say here is that like if you look at the uh, global map what happens is that farming kind of like goes off into regions uh, so like in the united states uh, we basically have this vast chunk of farmland right in here um and that becomes major farming area um, and same in South America, we have a kind of a farmland chunk here and farmland chunk in here and then uh, down in Argentina as well. So uh, that's kind of what we might think, but it would be cool to have a diverse range of styles of farms in Africa, which they could do because they have basically a separation between West Africa and East Africa. And there's not a whole lot of population in between here and it's pretty dry and difficult to farm, but interesting. Uh, to farm near the jungle. So, so let's get into some of the details on terms of types of foods farmed. So you can see corn is really big, sugar cane is really big, yams, rice is big, uh, cassava is huge, and wheat is huge. So and then it kind of tapers off as you go through here. Um, so I kind of sorted this data from the FAO to see where all the farming is and what types. Here's grapes, for instance. I was just eating grapes yesterday. Uh, I was very thankful to have some grapes um, and some other things. But uh, super cool to see exactly what the types of food are that are being farmed in Africa. Here's another way to break that down. You can see fruits and nuts being a pretty big percentage, cocoa being huge. Uh, vegetables being big and actually I really like this map I've looked at China and India and man it's awesome to see fruits and nuts being so significant and vegetables some of the other countries um, it's very weird you'd be surprised um, to see but you see sugar and candy being pretty big in Africa um, and some other things 
So I've been trying to discuss this pretty carefully, but you can see Africa is definitely doing their part in being efficient about food. You can see that they use about one hectare. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with a hectare, that's basically the size of a football field per person. So believe it or not, man, it's unbelievable how much food people eat or need in terms of land space, almost 10 football fields per person per year. So in the United States, which is unbelievable, but Africa, some countries using four, um, but a typical about one and a half or two. So, and this is the sustainability area. So definitely we need to kind of work on all these countries backing off on how much land they use. This is another way to look at it. You can see here, human development index, so very high human development, uh, high de development, and for some reason they show it as uh, you know more food necessary at higher levels of human development. I would think that this would be more of a curve, but who knows, um, a bell curve or something like that. So, but you can see here um, kind of uh, the average for Earth and then uh, kind of another number here. So pretty interesting to look at. It's also helpful to look at the map uh, that's not just Google Earth. You can kind of see, uh, if you zoom in here, it shows you some of the clouds, which is kind of interesting to see. Um, if you zoom in even more, you can kind of start to see what's going on. There's certain pockets here. Um, so this is actually the rivers kind of come in here. And it's really interesting because the wildlife definitely depends on different types of climates. So uh right in this transition area the wildlife may really be necessary to not farm so it's really tricky to find a good farming land um that is reasonable so that's why maybe mozambique may become a pretty important area for farming uh in the future and uh, especially out of dar es salaam um, and they're actually having quite a bit of trouble in kenya i get text messages from friends always needing food in Kenya. So you can see quite dry here with a little bit of farmland actually as you head towards Somalia and even on this side potentially. So the thing is that they're just not farming there. So basically outside of Nairobi, you can see that the farming is basically done out towards Uganda. And actually there's more farmland um, in here down in Tanzania as well. So uh, actually, there's just nothing in here because it's all desert. Um, so uh, the real question is how to work with Uganda. And actually, this is just being a super important region here. So, um, and the problem here is that the Serengeti uh, National Park, you have wildlife over here. So basically, what are you going to do? Take all the land around the lake and then have no way to access the lake uh, for the wildlife they pretty much have to come in through here uh, to get uh, free access but even that is only a couple miles of land is available to them so the wildlife really is struggling uh, to get access to the water so basically what happens is that down in here it becomes critical and right in here and even this side here um, but you know we just have to hope that and work um, trying not to farm in some of these regions and even reconsidering what we're doing around uh, Lake Victoria entirely. So um, this becomes some of the most important controversial farmland in the world because you have the jungle right here and you can see we're just hitting right up against the jungle and then stopping farming. Um, but there's definitely farmland even being done in the jungle. There's cities, millions of people living in the jungle now. Um, and you can see kind of where that farming is going on in the jungle. So it's unbelievable, but uh, there is a lot of farming being done. So uh, the question is, how does that work with the wildlife? Um, and from what I understand, uh, it's getting to be a very bad situation. I heard there's even very few monkeys even left in some regions. Uh, they have very little habitat, only a few miles of space to move around in and that's it. So um, basically it's a very big important question of wildlife, particularly in Tanzania because you have access to one, two, three lakes here and you have all this farming being done here and a lot of that perhaps being shipped out to Nairobi and Kampala. Now, if you look at the population map, you can see there's a huge population in this region. 
uh, here and also in West Africa and then actually Ethiopia coming in as a huge population as well um, not s nearly like what we see in India and China so you can see there's even more population there but with almost a billion approaching a billion people in Africa food is a serious problem so and uh, like I said I get people every day asking to try to get food so I wanted to look uh, more carefully and this is seriously not even enough detail uh, to look at we need to really look at this carefully uh, in order to understand what's going on so uh, again the soil maps do help but the trouble that I've been having is looking for the water so that's where you have to look at the river maps um, and it becomes pretty complicated you got to kind of zoom in and you can see that uh, the Congo is pretty much the main river here, but there are uh, some other rivers here um, that head out. And you can see um, kind of the flow here heading into the Nile, up into Uganda, and then the Nile heading all the way back through here. So there is some farming, but it kind of goes in a weird way um, along the rivers there. And there's definitely some new ideas in terms of rice farming uh, that I've been looking into up here in uh, northern Uganda as well as fruit trees and a variety of nuts and other things. Um, one thing you can do is you can get this data um, for all of Africa or you can select a particular size. So you can do middle Africa, eastern Africa, western Africa, south Africa and you can kind of study what the food situation is going on over time. So that can be very helpful. Here is a chart that is showing agriculture. So you can see um, that basically Africa since about 2012 has been having some serious problems with their economy and actually it's been getting worse. Hopefully things will get better, but you can see agriculture over time has been increasing, but it definitely could be an important area to look at in the future uh, in particular. I'll just show you this map really quick. So there's a commodity explorer. You can do this for the whole earth. You can select different regions, uh, the states, um, but what you probably want to start with is clicking on one of these. I really like to do rice or wheat because wheat doesn't require a lot of water necessarily. Rice is a, a very important crop because I eat it every day. So I've been trying to focus on rice. Um, if you click rice, you can get uh, some charts for all the countries around the world. Uh, including those in Africa per country. Now, for some reason, they don't show anything in Africa. They don't show Nigeria in this list here. Um, so the seasons are a little bit difficult, but you can probably match up the season with, uh, for example, Indonesia uh, or even Southern India, or you can probably look at Thailand and compare that. Uh, here's Vietnam. So the seasons might be fairly similar, but the rain is a different story. So you have to look at the rain. Um, and the rain kind of comes pretty heavy in West Africa, uh, starts one season on the one side of the Congo and ends the other season on the south side uh, down near Mozambique. So you have to look at the rain as well. Uh, but this is super helpful because you can see can zoom in on this map and start to see the regions where they are doing rice farming specifically um, and you can actually see Madagascar being pretty heavy on rice farming which uh, it does get a lot of rain you'd be surprised on the western coast almost the whole country fills with rain about a meter of rain in one month that's a lot of rain um, but and it goes on for several months so there's a little spot here with rice and you can see in Nigeria so but definitely some room for uh, more farming in eastern Africa there is definitely significant problems here and you can see this whole area is actually considered as farmland but there's not much uh, rice production done down in that region um, so that's an interesting thing and why there isn't uh, rice more rice and there's a lot of questions in terms of biodiversity because there's a lot of different things that you can uh, have besides just rice so what I'll do here is I'll go into this and look at see if I can find Nigeria here um, which may be a little bit difficult here it is so Nigeria um, and you can see on the map exactly where the rice farming is in Nigeria and it shows you some precipitation maps of uh, when the precipitation is per month 
um, as well as soil moisture. So you can start to think about when you can plant and when you can harvest on either sides of these graphs, which can be very helpful. So I'm gonna go very briefly into a 151 page document. Um, this is basically a bunch of different ideas about how to farm in Africa and open up uh, grocery stores and work with various types of farming people and organizations. So there's just tons of information here. I'll try to post this. Um, I'll go through it really quickly, but you can kind of see here's uh, some of the rice farming in Uganda. Uh, you can do this uh, crop calendar and click on the link there um, and then it just shows different images uh, different ideas about how to get access so here's in East Africa you might be able to work with Mombasa and then figure out a way to work all the way in through Uganda and some new areas of farming as well so here is some corn production in Uganda map um, there's just a ton of different information here so looking at some ideas for housing, water filtration, uh, and just different people to work with, some diagrams, uh, some interesting cities, uh, some definite uh, areas along the coastline of Africa, uh, how to work with uh, different parts of a city within Uganda, for instance, how to maybe add a farm area to a golf course, planting uh, fruit trees, or nut trees um, at a golf course um, and then just looking at different uh, farming regions kind of looking at the climate here um, there's just a ton of stuff so i won't get into all this but there's some different regions this is water i think this is water levels um, in the ground and then looking at different port access this is for import and export out of east africa mombasa uh, you can kind of see what's going on as well and then street view and then looking at different areas along the coast just a ton of different stuff so uh, if you're interested take a look at this there's a lot of information here it's uh, pretty interesting and uh, we should definitely talk about that if you're interested um, so uh, let me give you a second here so again uh, we're trying to look at the farming situation all throughout Africa is huge process of understanding right so basically one recommendation is that the best farmers in the world may actually be in the middle east um, because it's so dry uh, and so egypt actually has a lot of valuable advice and same with uh, uganda and stuff on one side of the nile right and then here over in nigeria the river kind of pulls around here and definitely nigeria is important here and actually south africa is kind of outside on the bounds here of what's going on in Africa. So you basically almost have a separation here with North Africa and even a separation with South Africa and Madagascar. Um, so, and wildlife is actually very important. Um, so we really have to think carefully about East Africa and especially in Cameroon here is thankfully there's not a whole lot of farming being done here. And that means they're sharing farming. They're eventually getting their food. Uh, from uh, Nigeria into Cameroon and there's a whole bunch of smaller countries here and actually these uh, you know the coastal line like I said used to have monkeys and a lot more wildlife than it does today so a lot of that has been pushed out and there's just such a small region here for some of the most important animals on the planet a variety of animals so um, that's important to think about so um, certainly, there's a lot more to this discussion. I really hope that you found this interesting, um, and I'll hopefully talk with you about it. Oh, one last thing. It would be really fun to organize some farming tours. We're looking at some ideas. I'm going to post some links and some ideas on how to do that. So I'd like to end on a very important note here is that basically where we get our food in the United States is actually Mexico to a large extent in the wintertime, um, and even California here, right? So believe it or not, Africa plays a huge role in the entire food system for our entire planet. Um, when you think about it, Europe has to have food in the wintertime. They actually probably go to Africa in the future to get that food, um, just like we do. In fact, the food travels almost 3,000 miles just to get um, to Chicago, for instance, or to East Coast. And that's all coming from just one area of Mexico. So Mexico is hugely important to study. Uh, and you look at these uh, in terms of just food that you buy at the grocery store. Unfortunately, a lot of the food in the United States is corn and soybeans, which is just 
for transportation or other foods. So even though it looks like we have a lot of farming in the United States, significant percentage of that is just used for cars and not really even for food. So it's very strange um, how important even a small farm is to the entire future of what's going on. Um, and definitely take a look at the important point that this is kind of the central piece. You have the west here and the east, and then we basically have Africa right in the center here. Uh, what's going on with farming, um, so super important. So again, I hope you enjoyed the study of this. Take a look at the soil maps. Uh, take a look at the population maps. Uh, try to understand what's going on in detail. Um, take a look at the river maps uh, for Africa. Um, and even the entire world, uh, take a look at through the Economic Explorer. I'll try to post some of these other links. Here is the uh, climate map. Um, and take a look at what's going on overall. So hope you enjoyed. See you later. Thank you so much.